Well, I'll ask you, what do you think finally like helped us kind of work through it and get back on the same page? Besides the hormones coming down? I'm just kidding. Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. Thanks for joining us again. If you are new here, my name is Mariah. And I'm Jeremy. And we are on a journey to conceive. Uh, we recently have had another law so today we just wanted to talk about our marriage and what role and what effect miscarriage has had on our marriage i guess i'll start yeah you can start. so i will talk about uh some of the feelings we had going on um after in the subsequent days and weeks after so i gotta say this is kind of a first for me well not a first necessarily but a first this far along um it was a, a little a little tough, a little frustrating, a little sad. I'm trying to console Mariah going through the process and, and still trying to wrap my arms around exactly how I felt. It will tell you that it's it's an interesting and, and heartbreaking experience. It's been sad at times, it's been emotional. It's been hard to work through because there's some other things going on too that made it even worse, but um, you gotta say it's been a process and, and we'll work through it and we'll work through it together and plan on being there for Mariah through every step of the way. Yeah, um, I don't know, I kind of feel like you kind of gave like a cleaned up version of it and I just want to kind of travel back a little bit. For me, kind of how I felt is that it was just like, Frustrating because my body is not doing, in my mind, like this is how I feel, in my mind, my body is not doing the most innate primal thing that it's supposed to be able to do. So that in itself is frustrating. No, I don't feel like it makes me any less of a woman or anything like that, but it's like, this is literally what my reproductive organs were made for and they're just not following through. So it was like that kind of frustration also, in the weeks after, I was not only trying to work through my own feelings, but I was kind of frustrated because in the midst of me trying to heal and people trying to comfort me and console me, when it came to Jeremy, he didn't exactly know how to comfort me and I didn't exactly know how to tell him or give him like advice on how to comfort me. It was one of those things that it was like, I don't even know what I need right now. I just <laughs> need something and as my husband I kind of need you to figure it out and I know for some people that's going to sound like really unfair but in our relationship we are literally best friends and sometimes I think that gets in the way of us knowing what to do for one another because I think oftentimes we rely on the fact that like oh I know what my partner is feeling right now so I know exactly what I need to do to get them out of that space or to make them feel better and this was one of those situations where I didn't even know what I needed and we haven't really gone through something like this as a unit. Yes, we had a loss back in December, but I kind of dealt with that on my own. Jeremy didn't even know I was pregnant at the time. So while he was disappointed in the situation, he didn't have that time frame to grow an attachment. So this was more so the first time that we were really both attached and we just kind of had to to figure out what exactly we needed to do as far as just comforting each other. And well, that was really difficult. Well, and to a point, it's, I guess, from a, a men's perspective, and we've talked about this together on, on several occasions, is men just feel in a relationship, a lot of men, at least I do anyway, I've heard that a lot of other men think this way too. We feel like we have to fix things and kind of try to assume that role. And to a degree, I felt powerless because there wasn't anything I could do to fix the situation. So it was kind of daunting in that I didn't understand what she needed and I didn't know how to fix it either. And I think that's the main thing. Like as a woman that gets frustrating when your partner's so honed in and has like laser beam focus on trying to fix it because this is one of those things, there is no fixing it. Yeah. So it's like frustrating because you feel like their focus is on fixing something that's impossible to fix mm -hmm. when it should be more so on figuring out how to comfort you. So I think that like really was a large hurdle for us. We did go to counseling and we, on a just regular routine as like maintenance of our marriage, we do go to counseling anyway. But this is one of those things where we had to kind of hash it out in counseling because I was 
extremely frustrated and I was kind of internalizing some of those frustrations because everyone wanted to tell me that it would be okay and that it would get better but I didn't feel quite understood like by my partner. I mean Jeremy is like I said my best friend and for him to be going through this with me and for me to feel so misunderstood by him was like kind of frustrating for me because then it made me feel alone within my own household. It wasn't necessarily something that I was like, yeah, I want to talk about this every day, but I don't feel like it was something that we openly talked about for. Well, and let's face it, us men aren't necessarily the most emotional of beings to be completely frank and honest. And no, you. and that can be yeah. frustrating in itself too, because it's like, is this even bothering you? Like. That was another one of the things I was frustrated with. I'm like, you're showing the bare minimum, in my opinion, of emotion. And no, I don't want him to sit here and, and fabricate these emotions that may or may not be there. I want him to be true to himself and open with his emotions and honest about them. But it was also very frustrating that I was like so outwardly emotional and so outwardly hurt. And I was kind of looking at Jeremy like, is this even bothering you because you don't really seem bothered by the situation. That's fair. Yeah. Another thing I guess I wanted to point out about like how our emotions kind of change towards each other. I think I felt a little bit detached from you in a way and a little bit distant from you because it was literally impossible for him to understand and for him to really just comprehend exactly what I was feeling and how I was feeling and what magnitude it was on. Like some days I didn't want to get out of bed, I didn't want to go do anything and it it just took a lot out of me and I didn't want to necessarily talk to anybody him included some days and all of that frustration you know I think it makes you behave in ways like towards your partner that you don't really necessarily like or want to yeah so I think we didn't initially like it changed our interaction because we kind of talked to each other sometimes all day every day and then after this happened it was kind of like I wasn't shut down but I at some moments felt completely numb and in other moments felt overwhelmed by my emotions so I guess we didn't really talk to each other as much as I would have yeah. liked to like initially after it happened we eventually got there to that point yeah. where we can talk about it now but that initial kind of blow I kind of felt like you were physically there but not quite emotionally there. Well, I think that's fair and I think there was there were times where I didn't know how to talk to you and I think there was a lot of emotions on both sides and I think it was difficult to connect during that period of time because the emotions were so all over the place. It, neither one of us was normal from a, a, an emotional standpoint and, and in certain cases probably even from a hormonal standpoint. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I mean, I didn't know you got home. Right. <laughs> I was nesting. I, I can speak for myself. I was definitely hormonal. Not that that's an excuse for it. some of like my. I don't know. I won't even call it like lashing out because I don't even think I lashed out. I just think some days I was just overwhelmed with my emotions and I was just constantly crying and couldn't communicate why I was upset. That's, that's true. Another thing that caused some friction and frustration between us was the fact that Jeremy kept trying to get me to get out of the house. He would invite me to uh, various work events and work dinners and stuff like that. And it was like very frustrating because I didn't want to be around anybody who wasn't a friend or a family member that understood me and knew what I was going through. And before everything even happened, I told Jeremy, that yes we are telling friends and family and of course all of you on YouTube yes the whole world <laughs> frankly <laughs> the whole world frankly essentially could have known yeah. but what I did tell him is just don't run around town necessarily telling everyone and what did I do he ran, ran around town and told everybody um, I mean let's face it I was excited I I, I was I mean the most a marriage to the most beautiful woman in the world oh um, but I mean, it was even from a male perspective. I mean, it, it just like to just look what I did. You know what I mean? And I hate to come off that way. But, wow! <laughs> it makes you so machismo. <laughs> you did. Um, but I was really excited. I'm not gonna say I wear my heart on my sleeve, but in this instance, I was really, really excited for the prospect of bringing a baby into this world with Mariah. I was really, <clears throat> excuse me, really excited, and it was. 
the aftermath was a, a little tough. I've never been forced to tell anybody that, hey, this happened. And being faced with those situations wasn't very easy, um, clearly. <laughs> um, so it, it was, I, I think if I had a chance to do it over again, I'd probably wait a little bit. But I, I, I'm also a very, I'm not going to say I overshare, but I, I do, I'm a very open person and I do like to, uh, I, I do like to show my excitement and I'm a very enthusiastic person and in this case I was really happy with life and, and what was potentially on its way. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very open too. My more thing was, I only found out after the fact, like, <laughs> someone from his job actually approached me at one of these events and was like, oh, congratulations, and I was kind of blindsided and like what the heck because you weren't supposed to be blabbing to everyone and for us personally and for me personally it's different telling family telling friends telling our youtube family that is one thing telling people necessarily at jeremy's work is a totally different thing and it's not because they're not good people or anything like that but i knew in the event that if something happened he would have to then go back and tell all of those people, and there are a lot of them there. Yep. So he would go back and tell all of those people that I miscarried and we were no longer expecting. And the difference between the two is that our friends and family are gonna be the ones that are there to support us. So them knowing, it was not hard for me or him to go back and tell family members that, hey, this you know is not happening anymore. This was the situation. And unfortunately, it didn't end well. I think it's a different kind of relationship when yeah. you have people at work. And even though you have a good relationship with mm -hmm. them, it's very different to have to go back yeah. and tell them that. It's and they're not. There's a lot of people. Yeah, there was a lot of people. And not only that, is they were not the people who were necessarily rallying around us to yeah. support us in that time. And I knew they wouldn't be, not because. You know they're not good people or anything like that but we just don't have that kind of relationship and that was the difference yep. i think who you tell has to do with kind of more so the relationship more than a time frame i know a lot of people have commented on these videos recently with the advice of next time you shouldn't tell anyone until you're three or four months or next time don't say anything and just keep it between you and jeremy while that may work for some people, that is not what we are going to do. That is not what we wanted to do. We chose to share it with family and friends, and we don't regret sharing it with family and friends. Now, Jeremy probably won't go and blab around That's to work next true. time. <laughs> is that safe to say? <laughs> no, he's not going to go and blab around to work next time, but we're going to tell whoever we want to tell when we're ready to tell them. Some of you who have said this may not know, but one of my losses was in between four and five months so no one you know not knowing up until that time didn't help the outcome of that situation yeah, either so what i'm saying is there's no right time and there's no perfect time and there's no safer time to tell people because in pregnancy we all know that anything can happen at any point in time up till the day that a baby is born to you know a month after things can happen so i don't know for me i definitely don't regret our family and friends knowing the only issue that came in was when all of jeremy's colleagues yeah. knew and the reason i say that became an issue is because i did not feel comfortable being around those people after the miscarriage yeah. it was more so i don't need someone or a, a lot of people around me that were going to be throwing me a pity party, so to speak, and feeling kind of bad around me and tiptoeing around me. And I also wanted days where I could just leave the house and go somewhere and didn't have to hear anybody necessarily talk about it. Yeah. Because when I did finally, <clears throat> what I think I stopped by your office one day, and this was like weeks yeah. after it happened, someone in his office had approached me and kind of caught me off guard and was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for your loss. And I was having a pretty good day. I wasn't actually thinking about it that day. So for her to come up and say that to me, it was kind of like, oh, great. Here I go. I got to like hold these emotions in because I really don't want to be an emotional wreck outside of my home. So yeah, that, that kind of caused some, I think, tension between us because you couldn't understand why I didn't want to interact with these yeah. people at that given time. It's like, you feel like I don't want to go outside where I might not be able to control my emotions or we may be at a work dinner and I break down crying and depending on who knows or doesn't know, they think like I'm a psycho because <laughs> I'm sitting here crying <laughs> over a bowl of spaghetti. Like, <laughs> <laughs> 
in Jeremy's defense, he was trying to be helpful. He was just trying to get me out of the My house. My own special way. Yes, he was trying <laughs> to get me out of the house and trying to be helpful, mm -hmm. but it really caused some, I think, unnecessary friction. And had you understood where I was coming from with just not wanting that type of interaction mm -hmm. earlier on, we wouldn't even <laughs> had those issues. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll ask you, what do you think finally, like, helped us kind of work through it and get back on the same page? Besides the hormones coming down? I'm just kidding. Is that not? No, never mind. Let me shut up. Uh, no, so I would say the, the biggest thing that helped us was the counseling, to be honest with you. Um, so I, we, we've been seeing a counselor for, oh, geez, at least the last year, pretty close to it. Yeah, it was shortly um, after we moved up here. So, so yeah. and, and admittedly, Mariah's been beating me up for the last couple of years about going to see a counselor. And, you know, like every guy, I'm like, why do we need to see a counselor? I don't understand, but we're fine, right? And it, she used an analogy. I think it's an analogy. Um, she said, you would take your car to the shop to get it fixed and updated, right? And and I said, yeah. She's and like, well, when maintenance, well, what makes a relationship any different? And from that point on, it was like a light bulb went off. Like, all right, fair enough. And, and I got to say, the counseling has been probably the, the thing that's been, I think we only go once a month, but it's been yeah. helpful to maintain that communication. And that one hour, two hour session is is that, that one, I guess, safe zone, <laughs> for lack of a better term, where we can um, <laughs> say what's on our mind and not have to necessarily feel like we're being judged by the other one. <laughs> you make it sound like we don't talk at all. Oh, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me clarify, that is 100% mostly Jeremy's <laughs> safe zone. <laughs> The counselor is somewhat of a facilitator that really helps us focus in and hone in on, on the issues that are bothering us. I mean, obviously we talk outside of the, of the counselor. <laughs> yeah, um, we only talk once a month. <laughs> <laughs> but the counselor does help us have those conversations that maybe we, we didn't think to have or got caught up in the moment or she finds those emotions that are kind of hiding inside at the time or, or that bother us about the other person. But it, it essentially gets it out there and gets it out in the open so we can discuss it rather than stuff it down deep inside and not say anything with which admittedly us men are um, good at doing. I mean, I pushed so long for counseling because you never talked about your emotions. Like when we met, it was worse than pulling teeth to get Jeremy to express how he felt about anything yeah. involving something that wasn't extremely happy. Like any other emotion, you could barely get it out of them. And some of the simpler things I think when I asked you like, oh, how do you feel about this? You would be like, I don't feel anything it's about forever. that. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and it's not even that like, you didn't have any feelings or opinions on <laughs> these things. I think you were just didn't know how to effectively communicate what those were. That's fair. And also were concerned about like me not liking them or not being able to accept your opinion, which I don't think I've not accepted. Well, yeah, I mean, admittedly, I've uh, for the longest time in our relationship, I was just kind of like, okay, I mean, I'll deal with it now and it's not that serious a week down the road, but what, what ended up happening was a week down the road, maybe the same thing would come up and it would just kind of add to, so it was... It was good to be able to go in and actually exchange and have conversations. That's what it was. Jeremy <laughs> loves to avoid conflict. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but Jeremy does love to avoid conflict. It's not that I'm a confrontational person or I'm a person who's just like, oh yeah, let's get into a conflict. But I understand that sometimes in a marriage, conflict is necessary to just be able to learn how to work through. That way you have better communication for when things like this do happen so yeah i think counseling is definitely a great way to go i kind of way to go like a Stop. sunshine Stop. <laughs> <laughs> i have to do that because <laughs> it's there i had to take the opportunity uh, it's not like we enjoy having like confrontations or we enjoy having like these conflicts but the fact of the matter is you're not always going to agree as a married couple and Men and women do process things very differently, so I don't know. I find counseling useful because to me it's better to address it and learn how to communicate better for next time and learn how to move on from it versus not addressing it and then you sweep it under the rug and then there's like built up resentments and animosities about it later on. Because I definitely think in this case when we're talking about the topic of miscarriage, 
there can be a lot of those like emotional kind of animosities or resentments not because you're blaming anyone like they caused it or it was their fault but i think for some people it's easy to look at their partner and be like you were not there for me or you didn't give me what i needed in my time of grief well um, let's face it it's it, uh, it, it at least from this first perspective hell i didn't even know how i felt about it until recently so it was a long time coming for me to actually compartmentalize the emotions that came along with it because i just didn't really know how i felt and how to deal with it so i guess the reason why we're sharing all of this stuff with you and what we're really trying to get at is the fact that miscarriages can be very damaging when it comes mm -hmm. to your relationship whether you're married or in a partnership um it could just be very damaging overall if you do not find like good healthy ways to cope with it both as individuals um and as a couple like i said we're talking about our marriage right now so as a couple the best way we kind of dealt with things was going to counseling sessions and then trying to talk about it a lot more and a lot openly um at home but we're definitely getting through it i think it's definitely kind of strengthened our bond and just made us understand each other just a little bit more it was definitely a hurdle in our marriage but we came out on top high five high five and it is all for the better. Hopefully we will not have to continue going, you know, through these kinds of trials, but I think in the future, if we were to have to do it all over again, that we would definitely know how to combat things a little bit better and how to help each other out a little bit more this time and how to just be supportive to each other in this time. So that's all we have to share with you guys today. And we're also curious to know for any of you couples out there, when it came to your miscarriage, what worked for you guys? How did you get through it and get past it as a couple let us know in the comments we're curious to know what you guys have to share especially the men men i want to know what you did to get through it especially with the fact that we are not the best at emotions yes we would love to hear more from some of the men i know there is mostly women watching on this channel but i know we have some guys out there too who watch along with their wives or along with their partners so definitely let us know in the comments that's all so we hope you guys have an amazing wonderful week and we will see you in the next video see bye ya.